So today we're gonna be destroying one of these poor innocent little shoes. Which one will it be? Aw, this little piggy did not find its way to the market, but it may find itself going through an identity crisis. Or do. I snapped them up on an online thrift shop for super cheap, of course. I believe they are all from the Just Right Shoe Collection. So here she is, all of her glory. Just some pumps and kind of a striped design. Very simple, easy shape to work with. Okay, so here we go. Let's get started. So to start prepping, I'm actually going to be as vague as possible because I actually started this build with a completely different idea in mind. And halfway through building the armature, I realized that it kind of looks like something else. So a new idea elbowed its way in and the old idea went out the window and now I'm just going to save that one for a rainy day. But as we go on, I would love to hear your ideas in the comments of what you think the original idea was. So anyway, what I'm doing is I'm just building an armature out of tin foil, and I'm just trying to basically roll it up to give it a little strength and uh, I'm going to be attaching with hot glue. Anyway, at this point, it started to remind me of something else, like Medusa, maybe? I got way too excited about that idea and jumped straight into it without any planning, and that will definitely come back to bite me. So now that there was a new idea, I had to pull off some of the tinfoil that I'd already put on, so that was fun. By the way, guys, no joke, it took forever to get some of this off. Way to go, hot glue. Moving on, I then sanded the whole piece down, partly because there was like hot glue and tin foil chunks, so I wanted to kind of smooth that out, but also because the shoe itself is made of resin, and I just wanted to take off the top coats so that clay could attach easier. And remember, whenever you're sanding resin, make sure you're wearing a mask so that you're not inhaling the particulates. Okay, so now we move on to the build itself. I'm going to be using epoxy sculpt. Fun fact, I didn't actually plan to use this originally. For some reason, it's just what I grabbed when I started working towards Medusa. Because of that, I didn't have the correct armature. So pro tip number one, use wire in your armatures, okay? Because I didn't use wire to strengthen my tin foil, it was very weak. Not a good plan, especially for something heavy like clay. That wasn't my original material that I was gonna use. Don't know why in my excitement, I just switched materials without thinking. That really comes back down to plan. Plan your projects. <laughs> It'll come to bite me later. Anyway, epoxy sculpt. I've used it before on my channel. Uh, it's a two part clay. You mix it together, it'll activate into an air dry clay. It's excellent for details. In this case, I couldn't use something like Sculpty because you have to bake it. And because the shoe itself is made of resin, you can't put that one in the oven. So, anyway, mix it together and you start playing it over the image the armature. Pro tip number two, don't know why I did this. Normally you would roll out a large thin sheet of clay and wrap it around the tin foil and then kind of shape and smooth as you go. I didn't do that. For some reason, I just sort of started applying small pieces to it. Don't do that. It takes way longer. It's way lumpier. Not smooth at all. Don't do that. So here's a video of me, you know, Applying it incorrectly. Don't do this. In fact, I should probably rename this whole video to how not to build a Medusa eel. I also covered the shoe itself in the clay. I had a vague idea of what I wanted to do here. Spoiler alert, I actually changed my mind overnight. So this was totally unnecessary, but that's okay. Now I did plan to come back and kind of like smooth things out before it hardened but I had to go make dinner and by the time I got back, it had hardened way more than I thought it would. So I didn't get to smooth it out as much as I wanted to. 
And lastly, what I'm doing here is actually trying to rebrace some of the areas. Like I said, clay is heavy. I don't have a strong armature for to support the clay. So it was as it was starting to dry, it was already starting to kind of like bend and crack and get weak in areas. So I was trying to reinforce that. Then after I did that, I pulled some literal trash and just tried to prop things up so that it wouldn't fall over while it was drying. Okay, so fast forward to the next day after it's had time to dry and you can see some of the damage that happened. Like I said, when it's the like, gravity took hold of it, then it sort of started cracking. There's some holes or some weak points. So the first thing I have to do is fix all that. I also took the opportunity to try to smooth out some of the particularly lumpy areas. So the last part of this, I'm adding some folded clay sheets over it to kind of give a drape fabric look. And I'm trying to mimic sort of a Greek tunic fabric, if you will. Once that's dry, now we sand. I'm using 80 here because that's the lowest I had. And I'm just trying to really rough out the rough areas, if you will. I'm just trying to get rid of the rough, really rough areas. After I was done with that, I went ahead and pulled out the Dremel. My uh, last PSA, always remember to wear a face mask when you're working with stuff like this. You do not want to inhale this. What I'm actually trying to do here is just carve in some details in the underbelly of the snakes. I want to give kind of that ribbed look that you see in a lot of snakes. I'm not really great on the Dremel, so it was pretty faint. Not really a necessary detail. Normally, I would prefer to add that in with clay instead of trying to carve it in. But it was actually kind of fun working with the Dremel anyway. Okay, and the last step on the prep journey is gesso. And because I'm literally painting a white sculpture white, let me just save you that and you're welcome. Okay, now onto the fun stuff. We're gonna start painting. So I knew that I wanted the snakes to be like a really dark green. And so I mixed up a couple greens with some black to get a nice rich color. I loved it. However, it became apparent very quickly that it's gonna need many layers. So after the first layer, I got lazy and just started slapping on green paint to build up the color. And no, don't worry, I will not subject you to watching all three or four layers that it took to get it thick enough. Okay, now we're about to start the top layer. So I did, as I mixed up more, green paint. This time I added a little bit of yellow to kind of brighten it a bit, but then I also mixed in gold so that I could have a little bit of a shimmer to it. So that's what you're seeing here and me just adding that sort of top coat to it. Love the color and it shines so well in the sunlight. Okay, so for the fabric, I knew that I would need multiple layers to build up color. And so I just wanted to slap on like a pale yellow to the warm base coat. But I added way too much yellow to my white, so it came out looking like butter. So now I've got some butter fabric. Yum! Actually, the most annoying part of it was that I kept getting yellow all over the green snakes. Not fun. Anyway, it's fine for a base coat. Moving on, uh, for the underbellies of the snakes, I opted for this kind of key lime color. I wanted something that was going to heavily contrast with the upper half of the snake, if you will. But I totally admit I was just sort of winging it at this point. I wasn't totally sure how what I wanted to do. And all these long pauses are because it was really difficult to paint. <laughs> uh, everything was at like a super weird angle and really kind of hard to get a brush into. So it's more of me just trying to figure out how to get there without painting everything else in its way. And as you can see, I got plenty of green on the fabric. Speaking of the fabric, what I've done is I've mixed up white and gold to kind of give it sort of a shimmery ivory. And again, I wanted yellow underneath to kind of bring out the warmth in white as opposed to the coolness that white can often give.
And once it was dry, I took more gold and I dry brushed it into the folds to kind of bring out some of the shading in the folds and the light and uh, bring a lot more shimmer to the. I want this fabric to feel really rich and majestic. Okay, so back to the underbelly. As you can see, I have kind of toned down the key line. And I did that just by kind of dabbing on some of the darker green and then sort of brushing it off. And now I'm going back in with the darker green to create sort of lines in the belly. And I'm following a lot of the guides that I had carved into it. Not that you can see that, but they are there. And I'm just doing this to kind of create a little bit more texture and detail underneath. I want to emphasize that contrast without making it like super obvious, if that makes any sense. Anyway, I'm a huge fan of Medusa. I think she's badass and I prefer the theory that she was gifted this snakes for hair in an effort to keep men away from her. Give her a life of solace and freedom. Unfortunately, it didn't work out that well. Heading towards the finish line, let's talk about finishing touches. I decided there wasn't enough shimmer in the snakes anymore, so I added more gold. And then where it got too heavy, I just sort of added a little bit of green, of the dark green, back onto it to kind of mix it in a little bit more. I'm just using a small brush to get it in kind of nooks and crevices, really highlight details and bring the shimmer back. I also decided to add a crown. Normally I would add a crown in the beginning when I was doing the clay work, but you know, I didn't plan anything, so I didn't do it when I should have done it. So because of that, I've decided to just go ahead and do this part in Sculpty. And I basically just rolled out a long string, if you will, and then uh, kind of rolled some pieces together and created a makeshift wannabe Greek-ish inspired crown. And we'll skip to the post baking. As you can see, I created kind of a little crown base for it and then added sort of snake tongues to the sides to flank the ornate shape. And I decided to paint it red. This took like four or five coats. I was worried it would be a little too strong, so I did I'd mix a little gold into the last layer and it tied everything in really well, I thought. Okay, and here I am counting the snakes because for some reason I keep forgetting how many there are. Found this little piece of ribbon, so I went ahead and cut it into some random sizes. And then I cut the ends to create kind of a double prong tongue. This next step, if you've never seen it before, is called heat sealing. So I just grabbed a little candle, this little tea light I had around, and then I just hold the ribbon up near the flame. So it's not touching it because it will catch on fire, but if you get it close enough, it'll seal the ends of it and it'll actually add like a little bit of like a burnt look to the ends, which looks kind of cool on the tongues. And then I just use some cheap super glue to attach it. And then the very last step was I actually added some little black things. I'm not sure what they're called to be honest for the eyes. Without further ado, Let's check out the final reveal. So we started with this simple little pump and we ended up with this glorious and ridiculous monster. It is completely ridiculous and I kind of love it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for joining today. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did and you learned lots of tips like what not to do. And while you're here, don't forget to hit like and subscribe so you can be in the know. And I will catch you guys next time. Bye.